welcome to a bonus episode of PB Busters. We were invited down to Tees Valley to help with some carp care video production for the complex. And to make things even sweeter, we were going to be fishing the land of the 30s. Yep, that's right, we were going to be fishing Alpha. <laughs> I'm getting you struggling up this hill. See you try it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not looking forward to it, mate. Alpha is a two and a half acre lake with a central island and underwater features such as a long winding bar and deeper pockets for fish to hide in. The water holds a stock of 55 English bred carp with 13 of them hitting the 30 pound mark. The late record is a 33 pound common carp named Stumpy. couldn't wait to get our rods in the land of the giants. No, we're not doing a bit of a session. Yeah, so we're here, we're here at our um, trusty home home venue of Tees Valleys. Back on home turf. Back on home turf. Um, after a fantastic session for me. It wasn't. It was. It was. <laughs> nah, it was all right. It was all right. I'll tell you what, we had a great time. I enjoyed the sun. I enjoyed the beer. Mm. Fishing was all right for myself. Listen, if Foxy probably come away with two fish and I had one, It'd then be... it probably would have been okay. But because he absolutely smashed it, I feel like I was a bit... <laughs> <laughs> a bit rubbish. I've been there, I've been there before, um, where Wayne's caught three like three on the 48-hour session and I had nothing. Or even when you're mixing the first PB <laughs> Busters episode video where 10-hour session, you had one, then you had three. So you had four in, in 58, 58 hours. Yeah. Um, Swings and roundabouts, isn't it? We, I mean, you're never going to... Well, I hope one day we do have a great a session, session both just... of us, yeah. Yeah. But, um, no, so we're, anyway, we're back on our home turf. The weekend just gone was, was it was epic. Yeah, it was It was The good, time, the it time was, spent was, was unreal. We've a little road trip like we've not done before, so. It was. And it's just a little taster of what we can expect from France. We're actually on Alpha today. Um, Alpha, I've been buzzing. I've been waiting a long time to get on this lake. So you should have to fish 10 sessions on, on Eagle, but... Um, this We're, is nice, by the way. Yeah, this isn't a box, but um, this is Aldi's version of Peroni. <clears throat> but yeah, so you, you should have to fish uh, Eagle 10 times, but we're actually fishing Alpha with Steve, who's the owner of, of Tees Valley Lake. So we're basically getting a little bit of tuition off him, and also, in, in return, we're going to be, hopefully, shooting some carp care videos for him, if we can get some carp out. So yeah, hopefully we'll we'll be able to, to shoot that video for him. Um, we need some fish to come out first. So Steve's really confident. So if he is, I am. Yeah. What the hell? He knows this late, like. Um, you know, but it's nice. Brilliant. So yeah, we've we've been taught a few things from Steve. Some um, rig tying tips. Rig tying, but I mean, what might come in handy as well is he's he's told us uh, some good spots around the lake as well for for the swims that we're on. Uh, I'm on peg one. And Foxy's on peg two, Steve's on peg three. So yeah, I mean, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that that at least one of us can pull out a chunk just so we could do his carp gear video. We've got 48 hours as well, so um, and we're not at work. So, you know, I'd rather be a day's fishing than a good day's work. <laughs> 100%. If I'm being honest, <laughs> you know what I mean? 100%. 
Yes. So I'd rather be out blanking than yeah. working. Yeah, I'm sure we all would. Definitely, definitely. So, but yeah, we'll just have to see how we go, and, and hopefully in this video we can bring you a, a, a couple of carp. A carpopotamus. Um, a carpopotamus, as Wayne says. And, um, yeah, it'll be a bit of a different video. Just, you know, it's a PB Busters one because we are fishing for, for the big for the big girls. You know, we could be pulling out a 30-pounder and absolutely smashing one of our PBs. Can you imagine? Um, mate, I'd be happy with a 20. <laughs> I, I would. I think the lowest I one is about 17. So I'd, I'd love a 20.1. Yeah. Lowest one in here is 17, so... My, I'd only just beat that for my new PB. So yeah, we'll see you in a bit. Couldn't have timed it any bloody better. I've popped off to go poo this morning. Put my receiver over to Foxy. And what do you know? Whilst I'm taking a poo, Foxy lands my fish. What a stunning fish. Get a shoulder there. Right, scales are zeroed. That's a 20 on the nose, would you say? Just a, well, yeah, 20 on the button. Yep. Just over and she's 20 pounds. Yes! New PB. New PB! Well, the new PB is finally here. We got no footage of it being caught because. Someone I had, had, to, had to, to go for a work. <laughs> I left my receiver with Foxy. Foxy ran over and actually landed the fish for me. Um, I yeah. weren't too sure on the rules, so we spoke to Snee, the owner here, and he says, no, it's your rods, you place them down. Um, yeah, you put them in the spot. You put them in the you spot. You put the bait on. It's your fish. So um, I was going to take the share with Foxy on this one because it was a team nah, effort. Mate. But... Nah, mate, it is yours. I, I, I did try to play it for as long as I could, but at the same time, I just... Rules are rules. It we was... just weighed it 20 pounds. Ah, get it! <laughs> 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 right, so I just want to have a quick catch up and a quick uh, talk about the fish that was that was caught that was landed. Um, obviously, you've seen that I've I've claimed it, and the reason being is obviously we're fishing with Steve, as you know, uh, the owner of Tees Valley, and his rules state that if it comes off of your peg, then it is your fish, uh, regardless as to who reels it in. So. Uh, we've just gone with that obviously it's, it's his place uh, it's his rules um but yeah obviously it it kind of still doesn't sit right with me it obviously would have felt a lot better if i would have done the whole thing um to me initially it felt like a a 50 50 kind of team effort between myself and foxy yeah i just kind of wanted to clear that up really um i've obviously claimed it but it doesn't sit right um obviously there's plenty more to come there's plenty more sessions hopefully you never know we still might pull something out here um, on this one but yeah obviously it's all about enjoying it um, enjoy the moment both of us obviously experiencing it together is awesome stuff so yeah regardless as to who caught it it doesn't really matter um, yeah live in the moment and enjoy it
Okay, so I just thought I'd show you guys, um, well, it's, it's a bit windy and cold out there, so me and Foxy are just kind of doing our own things and our bivvies. Um, but yeah, just go through kind of what Steve showed us in terms of what he does on the lake with his pellet. Um, so we've just got the micro pellet that they sell here. I've already put the water in, but basically what he does, he puts the pellet in, puts a bit of water in, just soaks them through, um, just so they're a bit damp. See, it's damp. It just breaks away nicely. Um, and then he uses an attractant um, in this case I, I did get this here I'm not sure if this is the same one he uses but it's something similar so he puts a bit of that in which I haven't done yet so if I can judge how much he kind of put in just get a spoon if that soaks in that for a bit it'll just ooze off slowly in the water just attracting the fish but yeah so that's what the pellet looks like got a nice little glaze over it let's see if it can do us do us the business through the night oh it was nice and warm it was nice and warm last night no fish unfortunately nothing to, to shout about but still got a couple of hours I've got a feeling one of us is going to pull something out in the next couple of hours I really have we'll see what happens but yeah yesterday was pretty good it was a nice day yesterday but yeah yesterday that the fish come out around nine o'clock. That is in about two hours, an hour and a half. So, yeah, I got a feeling that we could have one out before we go home. Fingers crossed. Okay, peeps. So, <clears throat> just thought I'd do a little bit of a message. Uh, I haven't spoke much to the camera on on this one really. I've been trying to learn as much as I can from Steve, and obviously we've been helping him film and stuff, but. So far for me, it's looking like a blank. Um, the wind's been blowing into into my swim. I'm in swim two on Alpha. It's been blowing into the swim for the last 24, 36 hours, something like that. Um, hasn't done anything. Haven't had a nibble on any any of the rods yet. Never know. I've got got like um, hour and twenty left, so we'll just have to see. It'd be lovely if I could get into one, but but if not, I've definitely learned a lot from spending some time with. with um, learn about rigs, learn about bait placement, learn about you know how to keep things simple, and then loads of stuff about the carp care. Uh, obviously, we're, we're going to be producing some videos, for Tees Valley uh, on carp care, and that's what we came here to do. Um, so, if Steve's happy with it, I'll probably put a few clips of that into here because it's really insightful and it's and it's good knowledge. And like I say, I've learned a thing or two about how to handle the carp and how to stop them kicking off and, and all sorts. So, um, yeah, it's been really, really useful. So you've just caught a big fish. First thing to do, have the bank sticks fair, push it in the spreader block. That fish is safe, make sure the fish is in deep water. Just take two minutes to relax. Set up your gear, get your carp care, your scales, your camera, get everything ready, your bucket of water, and then move on to zero on the sleigh. So while my equipment's ready, I've got my camera, I've got a towel, I've got propolis, scales are up. First thing, the bucket of water that's been sat there, just get rid of it. Turn it back off 
I thought we were going to douse the fish in afterwards, make sure it's fresh and clean, not stale. Even though it's been raining, the sling is wet, it still needs to be absolutely soaked. Dip it in one end, dip it in the second end. Absolutely saturated so it protects the fish. And then simply put it on your scales. And then what we'll do, turn the dial and we'll zero the scales up. Perfect. So the sling's zeroed, we're now going to put the fish in the sling. It's a big fish this in the net. So we're going to put the net inside the sling and lift the sling into the off the mat. The sling will float, it's a flotation sling. Take our bank stick out. The knack to undoing nets, I know some people struggle, it's an easy way. Elbow inside, push it slightly straight, it will come out very easy. As with barbless hooks, I've actually already unhooked this fish in the net. Sling either side. And zips up. It's all inside the sling. Just check down, make sure the fins are all nice and laid down flat. They're not bent over, perfect. Then we can lift the fish straight up and turn it off and You've got someone with you, it makes life a lot easier to take the net out. If not, fish under half, halfway the fish, other net under. So the fish starts losing control, cover its eyes slightly, put the fish in the dark, the fish will stop. Fish under the second half of the body, slide the net out, that's the net out. Swing back over, zipped up. Always zip it up. The fish can slide out. And our fish is ready to go straight onto the scales. That's a nice 30 pounder. The way we've just zeroed that sling, weighed the fish, we know now that fish weight is 100% accurate. If you did it a different way by not zeroing the sling first and trying to do something you sometimes get false readings and you don't get an accurate way. Another thing is, we, we supply these weigh hooks on the fishery. All scales should be held from here. If you're not using the weigh hooks and you're holding the scales, they've got to be held from here or with a bar. Never hold them like that. You will always get a false reading on the scales. Always have to be from the pole where they're designed to be held from. Okay, fish is all weighed. I'm going to move it. The reason being, I don't want any clutter in the background. I'll get off your mat and take the the fish. Okay. You've got to try for everything etc. So you would have it already set up. I have a friend here who's going to have to take the photos for me and I will show you how to take the photos of the fish. Okay, we've moved the fish safely inside the unhooking mat. That's a beautiful fish. Just going to give her a little bit of a wet water. Make sure she's nice and soaked. I hold the fish safely. Okay, my right hand first. I'm going to go on the anal fin there. Fingers either side, and your palm will balance. Same with my left hand, I'm going to go right through and go on the pectoral fin there. When I pick her up, she'll balance in my palms perfectly. If she starts to go, I feel she's going to move, I'll roll her back into my arms very calmly. So she'll stay there perfectly. If I feel she's going to go, simply just do that and lay her back down. Okay, balance her up. I feel she's going to go. Roll into my arms, lay back down. Absolutely perfect. You don't need to lift her high, just slightly above the rocking mat so you get a nice picture shot. You can take your, your trophy shots. Again, there's no clutter in the background. We've got a beautiful reeds behind us. There's no bivvies, nothing there to distract you on the photo. When you suffer from a really bad back, you come up on your knees, do the same thing, 
fingers through between the fins, lift it up, put your, hand, your elbows on your knees and just balance her. That'll take a lot of pressure off your back and you get a lovely trophy shot there. Okay, always treat the hook holes and any damage that you see on the fish. We recommend Propolis Wound Seal from NT Labs. You sell it at the fishery or you can get it online. Dampen the hook hole very lightly, straight off. Bit of Propolis only takes a little bit, it doesn't take a lot. And I don't know if you can see it clearly. Once I've put it on, if I wet it, it seals like a plaster. And that is the perfect antiseptic treatment. Got a little mark on its fin up here, which I noticed just there. So again, just dab it dry, just that tiny bit. Bit of propolis on. Fish is behaving really well for us. Put the water over the top, and that will set like plaster. And she can go back and she will be fit and healthy. Perfect. Okay, so everything's done, fish is all safe, got her back in the sling, just gonna release her, undo the sling fully. I'm just gonna hold her in the water until she's ready to go. And she gives a little kick there she goes. Off safely back into the lake. We have booked another session on Alpha in September, so we've just got a 24 in September booked in um, to try and get into the big girls. It would be nice to uh, to get a 20 or a 30 out, but yeah, we'll just have to see. Yeah, like I say, it's been been really interesting, really insightful, and just thank you to to, to Steve for kind of doing this with us. It's it's been good. Keeping my fingers crossed, I can I, I can get one in this last hour or so. Uh, but if not, I'll, I'll be back on Alpha on that next 24 and I'll, and I'll be trying, trying my luck then. Not the best session for me having blanked however i did pick up a fair few tips off ste which i can put into practice on my future sessions almost feels like another bittersweet session for myself if ste says it's my fish then i'm happily claiming it and claiming a new 20 pound pb as well thanks to foxy for the helping hand as always make sure to give the video a like hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed already and be sure to hit the alarm bell so you get notified when we post any new content. Thanks for watching.